I built the B car, which was uh, what an artist can do with limited resources. It was really important for me that it had all the components of a, of a real car. So it has a suspension. You can see the independent suspension on all four wheels. It has a mid-engine, and it's extremely light. Uh, so the whole thing weighs a couple hundred pounds. I can pick it up. And it's um, sort of a cross between uh, bicycle technology and aircraft. So it's got a fabric-covered skin and a space frame like, um, like a fancy racing bicycle. Uh, really was to take the place of two performances that I plan to do in Europe in the fall, one in Amsterdam and one in Paris. Really, it was more, it was more about the idea of uh, um, sort of Robinson Crusoe of high tech. an installation that consists of uh, 50,000 uh, nickels and uh, each nickel has a small wooden match that's laid on top of it and they represent the entire Russian tank force that's poised on the Iron Curtain on the eastern edge of the Soviet Union. The reason I made the piece was because I kept reading this figure 50,000 it's five and a bunch of zeros after it I was curious to see what that really looked like because um, it seemed so abstract, you know, it's as if they could have maybe dropped a couple zeros or add a couple. It seemed sort of arbitrary. I, I thought about this piece for a couple months and I actually went to some uh, the toy manufacturers and I was going to have each one die cast out of plastic. And, um, you know, then I thought, God, how stupid is the government? I'll end up with. Uh, you know, a garage full of these uh, miniature tanks, you know, and it was a lot of money. It was like all the money I had it was going to take six or seven thousand bucks. And I kept trying to think of a solution that could represent the tanks and didn't, you know, wipe me out in the process. And, you know, I would have done it if, if I'd felt good enough about it. I mean, you know, it wasn't the question of the money, it's a question of didn't you end up, you know, with a garage full of this stuff? And it's almost as stupid as, you know, having to stockpile weapons. I mean, and so I came up with a solution which I really like because um, initially the piece didn't cost anything except the, the you know, $50 worth of matches. And the money, you go to the bank, you give them $2,500, you get your 50,000 nickels, you know, use them, you wash them off, you give them back to the bank, it doesn't cost you anything.
I remember talking to engineers about the big wheel, and um, I remember saying, I remember talking to somebody about the idea of hooking the motorcycle up to the big wheel. You know, I was going to use a car maybe or something, but you know, all that won't work. You know, Samson was like that too. When we first set it up, they had three engineers that said, "Yeah, hundred ton jack, no problem. He'll take the walls right out." And and so you have to say, "Well, no, I'm not. That's not what I'm doing really. It's geared down so that's not going to happen." And and yet, you know. The institution and the people that work for it are, are, are involved with, you know, the supposed experts are telling them that it's not going to work, that this guy's nuts and, you know, he's going to screw the place up. And, you know, my job is to try to mediate between them. Even though you see a lot of equipment, this is really a conceptual sculpture. And what it consists of is uh, the turnstile, which every viewer who sees the exhibition has to come through. Turnstile is connected to this gearbox. So each person to the gallery puts a little input into this gearbox. This gearbox is connected to a, uh, another gearbox here that changes the direction. Comes up here to the 100 ton jack. This is like a car jack. And it's slowly, very, very slowly, pushing these timbers out the steel plates that are pushing on the bearing walls of the museum. So um, real slowly, each person coming into the museum is helping this jack to expand. There is a tradition for what I'm doing, and it, and it is, you know, if you look back in our history, it's there, you know, if, if uh, you know, if some of the um, people at the turn of the century were here now, they wouldn't be making paintings, they'd be doing art like I'm doing, or some people I respect are doing. Do you know what I'm saying? But people who see, want to see that same format continued, which I don't think is, is really very realistic. Because the people that we respect now in art history were at their times seem difficult and outrageous in pushing something. And that is the, basically the history of art, you know, is that it, 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 do, it does push your head around a little.